Welcome back, friends and fellow collectors, to another episode of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays, brought to you by my friends at smallscalehobbies.com. The subject of today's video is, quite frankly, a vehicle that I didn't think we would get a scale model of for at least another decade or so, and that is the Steyr A2 6x6 Pandor. Now, this is actually used widely by the Austrian army. However, in very limited numbers over the past 15 years or so, it has been in use with some of our country's most elite counterterrorism uh, and special operations forces. So, what makes this vehicle so cool, so different? You may have never even heard of the Pandor, even if you call yourself a military history buff or a fan of military vehicles. Well, the Army calls it the AGMS, or the Armored Ground Mobility System. And as I said, basically it is a 6x6 armed personnel carrier. It is currently in service with the guys in Fort Bragg, as well as some of the different Ranger attachments that they work with, like the 75th Rangers. Uh, again, it is a custom-built variant of the Pandor APC, which is manufactured by U USS SOCOM by General Dynamics Land Systems. It can transport up to seven fully equipped commandos, plus its commander and driver. Now, as you can see on the model, this has a lot of benefits. One is the way that the body is built, and that is taken specifically to minimize the damage to critical areas of the vehicle, like the engine compartment, like the crew compartment, if this vehicle should strike a improvised explosive device. So it does have a little bit of that uh, that V-shaped hull that you'll see on other vehicles like the MRAPs, the Cougars, the Buffaloes, etc. Uh, also, the one that you see here, the scale model, is as close as I could possibly get it to be one that's used by the Army. The Army actually has a custom um, ballistic protection shield over the... Uh, over the hatch that's right there. I was going to try and scratch build that, but for the sake of being behind on Military Monday's videos, I had to get this out. Um, so if I decide to scratch build that, I will keep you guys updated on Instagram, so be sure to follow me on that. But that is the easiest way to differentiate uh, one of the European Pandors from ones that are used by uh, our elite counterterrorism forces. It is powered by a 6-cylinder, 6.6-liter engine. Um, this one... You can put a lot of different cruise service weapons on it. This one has the uh, the remote-operated M2 machine gun, which I did try to detail as much as I could. You could also put a multiple grenade launcher on here, like a Mark 19. Um, you could also put a 30 cal. You, you could put a, a tow missile launcher on here. You could really put any weapon that you needed to uh, and whatever you thought you might need for that particular operation. It does have custom up armored up armament on it this one on the model doesn't have it but all of them in country will have uh, electric anti-ied countermeasures so you guys have seen those very skinny poles that often protrude out of the back of vehicles that's what one of those are used for uh to the best of my knowledge and research that i was able to do and talking with people in the service that i know um this vehicle was created as a response to what our troops experienced in places like Somalia in 1993. They wanted to have a wheeled assault vehicle that they could quickly hit target. Uh, they, they could quickly launch from a base, hit a target, and drive back uh, and have a little bit more protection than they would have otherwise had in Humvees, for example, soft-skinned vehicles. So this is one of the fallouts that happened from the operation in Mogadishu, Somalia. And most experts would agree that if they would have had vehicles like this in Mogadishu, they would have taken a lot less casualties um, than, unfortunately, they did. So, it is. it takes some components from the Striker vehicles, it takes some components from other APCs, but basically the, the AGMS, uh, or the, the Armored Ground Mobility System, is designed for one purpose, protect the occupants inside. It can travel very, very quickly. It can deploy very, very quickly. It can defend itself if need be. And uh, as I said before, it is one of the more unusual vehicles that chances are 99% of my viewers have either never heard of or never seen or a combination of both. Okay, let's transition now to the model. I'm sure we're probably already about five minutes into this video. 
But it's important to share the stories with these. That That is half of Military Mondays. Yes, we want to see the models, but we also want to know what they are representing, what their real-life counterpart is, what's the history behind it, why are they here. And this is definitely uh, one of the vehicles that has a very strong lineage and why it is here for a very specific reason. It is a 187-scale kit by Trident. You can pick these up at smallscalehobbies.com right now. Again, the kit is of the... Uh, A2 6x6 variety. It is based specifically off the Austrian Army Pandors. However, as I said, I have done a little bit of work to get mine to look like an Army one. Um, if you have a lot more skill than I do, which is not hard to do, um, I definitely would recommend scratch building the, the armament around the hatch here. Again, there are actually photos out there that are, are pretty widely available now. It's not a classified vehicle. Um, so you can you can check those out. Now, it doesn't come with a lot of the accessories, or I should say it doesn't come with most of the accessories. It does come with the um, these parts right here, which I know they have a term, and the, the name escapes me right now, but basically you can see them a lot on old Land Rovers too. If the vehicle were to get stuck, you can put those underneath the wheels, and it helps get traction. So it comes with those. It comes with this equipment bag. It obviously comes with the, the M2 machine gun, uh, but that's it. All the other jerry cans, all the other bags, the equipment... That you see that I have outfitted with mine, uh, those were either donated from the, the, taken from the parts box that I have from other kits, or they were part of the also cast vehicle accessories kit, which I highly recommend you picking out because you can outfit your vehicles um, from World War II all the way up to today with some of the accessories that are included in one kit, and they're a lot of fun to do. You can see they are painted in a variety of different colors, from NATO green, dark green, NATO brown, black, uh, khaki up here for this bag, the machine gun. Uh, as I said before, is painted in gun metal. This jerry can right here is part of the casting. The rest have all been added on extra. Here's your antenna at the back. Um, and again, this extra piece right here, too, does have to be installed on the main gun once you're done with it. The one thing from the kit that I don't have on my model, it comes with two very fine side view mirrors. Um, I have elected not to put those on because they are very fragile and they will break. And because I am planning on displaying this for a while, I didn't want to have to worry about those popping off every time I moved to this vehicle. But just know, if you do want to put the mirrors on, they are inc included with the kit. But the majority of the other accessories that you see are not included with the kit. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's Diecast Emporium Military Mondays video. I really, really hope you have enjoyed this one in particular. Again, this is a very unusual piece of equipment that you are not likely to see. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't believe any uh, police agencies, especially at the, the local or the state level, have any of these for their, uh, their SWAT teams. The ones that uh, are in the government are still at the highest levels of the government, to my knowledge. Um, but it will be really cool to see if these do end up getting scaled back like we see a lot of other military vehicles. For example, just now you're seeing a lot of the original NRAPs, um, a lot of the Cougars. Those are going up on the government surplus uh, market, so SWAT teams uh, are buying those to use as their incident response vehicles. So it'd be really cool if we get to one day see a bunch of these prowling down at your neighborhood streets. All right, guys, thanks again so much for watching. If you want the model, very, very simple. Click on the link in this video's description. You can pick it up there. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.